Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to do a fancy mushroom pendant. So kind of build a cool mushroom inside and then decorate the back. I want to thank all the new students coming into the school. It's such a pleasure to see you and I really appreciate you signing up. I put up the videos to help people with ideas, projects, inspiration, techniques, whatever, whatever it does to help you. So thanks again. If you need anything, feel free to email me. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is pull down a piece of brown glass. So this is, oh, probably walnut or something like that, like just a opaque brown glass. And you can use different colors here. Obviously, this is just kind of one concept and feel free to change the colors around, change the background around, whatever you'd like. So I have a piece of, oh, like maybe butterscotch or caramel, something like one of those colors, like a brownish beige color and then I'm just putting on some thin stringer marks along the side of this rod and then that's gonna kind of make the mushroom stem have a little bit more detail so I'm just gonna add these on and I have four camera angles again for you guys so hopefully you'll be able to catch everything it's a pretty simple kind of concept but I think really what I'm showing here is put a lot of detail into a small space so really you know make as many little lines as you can for the stem and dots and the background just really try to put that detail into this piece and, and really put a lot of detail into a small space now I'm heating it up and pulling it out so it's thinner so it, it can be the stem of the mushroom and I just have my seven millimeter clear rod. And I'm gonna pull out more than I need and feel free to put multiple mushrooms together, whatever you'd like to do, just to kind of add your touch and, and make that detail in the small space. I'm melting in the last little bits of that stringer on the end of the rod, even though I may not use it all the way down there, I want it to be prepped up so that it is ready to go when needed. All right, so now I'm gonna heat that up, pull off any excess glass or, you know, just maybe parts where it's just the caramel color and then grab my jacks. Just kind of make that a little bit flat, really lightly. All right, once you do that, the next step that you're gonna do is you're gonna put on one layer of clear over that and you really wanna be careful not to trap air and that's kind of the key to this project as well is being able to encase something without trapping any air which is important as we get further on into marini and and other kinds of patterns and things like that we really want to be conscious of keeping the air out of the piece so i'm heating up a very thin glass rod probably two millimeters and the thing to remember here is to really get that clear glass nice and hot while the other glass the stem is staying cool and that way that clear glass is so hot that it just melts and pushes out any air as it melts into the crevices from the last one so just heat it up everything's real hot and just push all that air out as i put another la layer of clear on there so i just wanted to go around one time first and that adds a little bit more structure because the glass gets thicker it can retain a little bit more of its cool temperature and won't get hot quite as fast as it was when it was just the very thin inner part of that stem. So now I'm going to heat it up, melt all this layer in one time really good, and that's going to set me up for my next step. So as I melt this in, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit for you guys. And then I'm going to do another coating of clear over that. So I've melted it in. And now, just applying that second level of clear all the way around, making sure not to trap any air, squeezing that air out, making sure that clear glass is hot enough so it can push that air out. And then getting all of the space
And you can see I'm just trying to fill in any empty space with the clear glass. And now I'm going to heat this whole thing up and melt it in again, that second layer. So now we have two layers of clear on there, hopefully not trapped any bubbles yet. I'm just going to punny up to make sure that I can heat up the very back of this as it's getting closer to the stem of where the mushroom will be. Alright, so now I'm just heating it up, melting everything in, and now I'm going to detach that punny that I used to help stabilize it. And then I'm going to flatten the, the top here with my jacks, and that's kind of setting me up for my next step, which is applying the red for the mushroom cap. So this is just one of those cadmium based reds, uh, probably lava or maybe one of the neocads, I'm not sure. Any of them will work just fine. I'm going to clean off any bubbles or scuzz that's on the rod. You can see everything is encased nicely in there. You can see the center of what the mushroom will be. And I'm going to heat up the front of the red rod and get a little gather on there and push that right on the top and that's going to end up being the cap of the mushroom. Take that off and the excess glass. And now I'm going to use my jacks to just push that down, kind of go around the edges a little bit and kind of curl that over. Use the jacks to just push that down a little bit. You can see it kind of making a more of a steeper angle along the side there. All right, there we go. That's that's your mushroom cap. So, kind of mushroom is starting to take shape now. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pull some white stringers, one one thin white stringer, and then use that to decorate the top of the mushroom. The classic Amanita. So I'm just going to grab a little piece of clear and then pull, make a small stringer, pretty thin stringer. I'm going to take off this big chunk on the end and then I'm going to use just the very tip of this stringer to apply some some really thin dots like just small dots and you can put bigger ones multiple colors you know feel free to work with this technique this week you guys and post in the facebook group all the cool things that you make using these techniques i'd love to see mushrooms with multiple colored dots multiple mushrooms different things being encased just applying each dot really carefully just heating up the very tip of this stringer and you can see I'm pulling it off really small amounts and covering the whole thing. Applying dots to the edges here, filling in any spaces that I think I could fit one more dot in. You want to be careful not to hit the dots together. That will not create a good look. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit while I melt them in for you. So just slowly melting them in using a soft flame, making sure that the dots don't bubble or boil. And you can do this by just really heating up with a soft flame, uh, a little bit more propane in it. Pulling off any gunk or bubbles or anything on that glass, that clear glass. Now I'm going to heat this up, melt um, a little gather together of this clear glass. Kind of keep the mushroom cap a little bit warm. You can see all the dots are fully melted in there now. And I'm going to heat this up and attach it. Melt it right on there. And connecting that together. And I'm going to heat up little tip there and pull off maybe any bubbles or anything that was on the glass any gunk I'm gonna use the jacks to push that back around 
and you can see it's now encased in, in clear. And I want to make sure that when I'm applying my next layer of clear, that I don't trap bubbles again. So I'm going to apply some heat here, melt that together kind of um, a bit, and then apply some more clear over that. So now I'm just going to apply another layer of clear glass, speed that up a little bit for you guys. So again, I'm, I'm, it's a bigger rod this time, maybe a five millimeter. And I'm starting at the edge of the cap and pulling down, making sure that the rod is really hot so that it squeezes out any air that may be trying to be caught. So I'm going around the whole thing, adding another layer of encasement around here. Now that I've encased this whole thing in another layer of clear, I'm just going to melt it in, melt it all together. I'm just going to finish melting in this second layer of clear over the mushroom. And now I'm going to heat it up, making sure that it's all smooth, all the way melted together. You can see it just kind of melting in. And there's the mushroom. You can see it starting to look encased. And I'm going to take the punty rod off. And I'm going to pull a little bit of that clear off because I want to attach an opal. And I want the opal to be kind of floating above the cap of the mushroom, but not too high. There's a little bubble in the clear that I picked off there. Just, you can pull a bubble right out of the clear with your tweezers or a clear glass rod. And now I'm just going in to the back side and the side and heating that up a little bit more. And I'm gonna get my stuff ready for the opal encasement. So here I have a nine millimeter tube. I'm just gonna blow that out a little bit. Just a teeny little bit in the round bottom. Kind of go through my opals decide which one to choose and put that in there. You can see I'm using wood tweezers and not touching the opals with my hands at all because I don't want to get any fingerprints on these opals. It could make the scuzzy look or not, you know, hurt the color somehow of the opal. So I'm going to heat up the bottom of the 12 millimeter tube and the opal is kind of standing on edge in there and as it gets hot this, the ground where the opal is sitting starts to become more and more liquidy, move faster and faster, and it kind of sucks it in and starts to encase that opal. So now, now I have the opal you know, fully encased on the rod. And I'm going to pull off a little bit of the glass on the bottom here so that there is less space between that opal and the mushroom cap again. I got the mushroom here. I'm just going to heat this up. Got the opal encased, and I'm going to put it on the cap of the mushroom, making sure that both are really hot and that when I touch them, they really flow together. See that they just kind of flowed into each other and didn't really create much of a line or a gap or anything like that. So now I'm just going to heat up the opal in that clear glass and remove the blow tube that I used to make the opal. And there's probably a little bit of extra clear glass on the top of here that I can take off as well. Just gonna heat that, heat that down, condense it up, and then <clears throat> make sure that's all melted in nicely. And you can see that opal floating above the mushroom now. We'll add a little bit more clear glass on top of that so that it's not at the very top of the pendant. It can be, but I think for the look that I'm going for, more like just the hovering opal over the mushroom. I'm going to add a little bit more clear glass. Make sure I remove any scuzz or any little pieces. Stuff on the, on the clear glass. And now I'm going to coat this again on the outside. Kind of adding one final layer of clear glass. 
making sure that the rod is really nice and hot and it'll push out any air bubbles. You can see the opal there. Just filling in any gaps. Making sure that I've gone all the way around. And you can do this more times. You can definitely add in colors and layers or whatever you want. So now I'm just going to add in a little bit more clear glass on top of the opal as well. And then I'll be able to melt this whole thing down. Kind of make a nice pendant there. So I have my rod holding tool. You can use another piece of clear glass to hold a rod. You can use this style tool and there's also a tube that works as well. So I'm heating this up and melting that clear glass in over the opal. You can kind of see it all coming in and forming the shape. So once I have this all coated and clear and it's ready to switch sides, I'm going to get my punty ready for switching the sides. Heat up the end there, taper it a little bit just on the end and attach on the top of the mushroom cap and that way it'll give me the opportunity to melt in the rest of that clear glass and kind of get that shape more finalized. Just going to heat that up, pull off any extra scuzz or bubbles or weird shapes that looks like they may trap air bubbles. And then I'm going to melt that all in. And if you want to get a little fancy too, and this piece is all about a little bit of detail in a small space, you use some frit on the bottom of the mushroom and it kind of looks like some grass or dirt or earth or whatever. And feel free to add smaller mushrooms, trees, whatever you guys would like going to heat this up and add a little bit more frit you know usually sometimes you need a couple little dabs of it because one layer is kind of thin so I got that frit on there I'm going to melt it in a little bit and then just encase it with clear so it looks kind of like a plateau so heat it up melt it in then attach some clear I melt in a little bit of that clear off of the rod. And you can see I'm building up the shape a little bit. Take that off and now I'm going to melt this in all together. And again, I'm using that paddle at an angle, just like I did with the mushroom cap to kind of make that shape smooth. Hope it starts to melt in and cover up as much of the green frit as possible. I'm going to just speed this up for a second while I melt this in. Going back and forth. It's kind of letting that all droop together and you can see it's making a really nice shape now. You can see the mushroom, the opal, and the green grass in there. All right, and once you have this shape, I mean, you could leave it like this. This is obviously perfectly good pendant. You can make a loop on that. Or what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to flatten the back. So I'm going to heat this up just on one side. And then use the marver to push down and flatten it. Then heat up more on the back and go to the marver again. And this time I'm gonna use my paddle. And when I use my paddle, I use a rocking motion to make sure that I don't distort the front of this. And I also try to let the front cool down as much as possible while heating up the back. And that's that helps push down the back to be flat. So once I have that there, you can fume and dot. You can use different colors, marinis, more opals. And this way you get to decorate the whole background as well. So I really want to see what you guys will do with these different backgrounds this week. And you can post that in the Facebook group. There'll be a, uh, a thread just about this particular project. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fume the back gold. And then I'm going to encase one, one dot. 
and hopefully that kind of looks like either a moon or a sun or you know some celestial body so I'm just gonna get that nice and warm now I have the gold so I'm gonna lower my flame down to kind of more of a pinpoint flame a little bit more oxygen there you guys can really see what that gold fuming flame looks like you can see all the gold just get deposited on the back of the uh, pendant and now I'm going to use that thin clear glass to just put one one dot you can do many dots you can do whatever you want in the background I really can't wait to see what you guys make make with this one so I'm just going to heat it up melt that gold that excess gold off and then melt that dot in a little bit and once that's melted in I'm gonna do like a starry night kind of background like different blues and darker colors I just kind of swirl them together it's not something I've done before but I just wanted to experiment a little bit with this technique so I got some thinner rods and I'm just kind of putting on some different colors and swirls on the back you could do a much more organized pattern or a chaotic pattern it's totally up to you guys all right now I'm gonna grab a, a darker blue and kind of swirl that one around as well so I got three shades of blue I'm working with here these are all the glass alchemy blues I really love these colors they're some of the most stable colors of the whole um, the whole color palette as far as working in the flame they always stay the same color and they never have any compatibility issues so I'm going to heat this up and pull out a little bit of a stringer and that way I don't just put a whole bunch of unnecessary blue glass on the back of this I'm just kind of wrapping it around you know, I've left kind of the, the base of it not done right now, you know, because I could maybe do a lighter color there or a pastel color, but you could also just do the same three blue colors as well. Just going to go in and kind of pull that around. And, you know, that you got if you want to keep that dot from melting in, you got to kind of be very careful about moving the glass behind that fume dot. So I'm just adding a little bit more of this color. This is Aqua Azul from Glass Alchemy, this particular blue. Just kind of swirling that around, adding a little bit more blue glass. You can see the background starting to take shape and it looks like there's a scene happening. And I'm going to melt all of the back background in now. Just heating that up. Using my marver to kind of push in it. Any of the stuff that's sticking out. Just finishing off that melt. Now we have a flattened back pendant. You could add more decoration to this. You know, roots, lines, other patterns, sandblasting. There's a lot you can do in a very small space. So I just want to show you kind of... This took me about 45 minutes or an hour uh, for the whole thing, for the whole making of this process. I'm going to cover the bottom of this in black glass so it kind of hides the work a little bit. And you'll be able to see the bottom of the grass in the background but really not see the work under, under that clear glass. Just going to heat that up, melt some black in there. This is Jet Black by North Star, also a very stable color. I'm going to pick off any excess scuzz, bubbles, things like that. I'm going to go around with the black a couple of times, making sure that I fully encase that clear on the bottom. And I'm pulling off any excess black. Now I'm going to melt that in. You guys feel free to do roots or 
different colors, rainbows, I don't know. Anything that you want to do down here. <clears throat> and let's see what kind of worlds and little scenes we can make in such a small area. I'm just going to heat this up a little bit and melt all that in. Kind of looking at the shape of what I want for my final piece as well. <clears throat> just checking that out. Usually I like to look at my pieces from a few different angles as I make them. Now I'm going to attach a punny to the bottom. Have that all melted in nicely. The shape is ready to go for the pendant. You can see the opal in there in the back, the background, the fume and the black. So I'm going to heat up the that punty and remove it. And now I'm going to use this blue aqua azul rod to make a loop or a bale. Just going to heat that up make that into a slight taper and then I'm going to leave on about half an inch or so of glass I'm just gonna take the rest off and now I'm gonna grab it pull it towards the front and then flip it back around to the back and that's the bail and that's the little piece that you're gonna be able to hang it from a necklace or on display in your window or something Gonna go in with my mini torch, heat up that connection and that seal, making sure that it's really nice and even and all fluid and melting together properly. Now you just use your graphite reamer or brass reamer to open that up. Now I'm gonna apply a little bit of heat to the whole thing. Just getting this warm um, all the way through before I put in the kiln, not so it's melting or will be deformed by the heat of the kiln, but just to make sure that the core of this where it's encasing the opal is not a huge difference in temperature than the outside area, the surface. So one way to do that is to apply just a really nice even heat throughout the whole thing and then let it kind of cool uniformly a little bit before you put it back in the kiln. I'm going to knock this off. Just heat up the bottom, making sure to remove the punty mark. And there it is. There's the pendant. I really appreciate you guys watching this. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, right now, it's time for review with Revere. All right, your first step is to make your mushroom stem. You can use any sort of coloration you'd like here. Your next step is to encase that all in clear, making sure you do that very carefully, not to trap any air bubbles. After that, you're going to want to shape and attach your mushroom cap. After you add the cap, you're going to want to add some white dots or dots to your cap. Then you want to melt that in case it in clear. After you finish with that, you can attach an opal above your mushroom if you'd like to. The next step is to add some frit or some decoration on the ground to add more depth to your scene. The 
The next step would be to flatten the back so that you can have a nice surface area to decorate it. After you've finished with that, you're going to want to decorate the back with different colors, fuming, anything like that. And once you've finished with all of that, you've gotten your mushroom finished, your pendant, pendant, pendant finished, you're going to make the bale. And then you're going to put that thing in the kiln. Here it is. You can see the bale the opal and mushroom, the decoration on the stem and the black base. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope that you got something out of it and I'll see you next week.